when we need to improve something, a product, a technology or a lecture, we actually have only two ways to go, fortunately or unfortunately. And one way is pretty standard and well known, it is called optimization. Basically, we take a list of parameters that describe our product or process. We agree on optimization criteria or criterion that would tell good result from bad result. And we vary this set of parameters until we reach maximum, minimum or just appropriate level of improvement. There are powerful mathematical and experimental methods of optimization widely taught in universities, realized in professional design software and used in industry. Have you heard of uh, Six Sigma, for example? Stochastic optimization, topology optimization, genetic algorithms. All of them is a very powerful set of tools we have to know, we must know. And if we don't know them, instead of visiting our mathematical class, we are doing something much less entertaining. All of optimization methods deliver the same result. The best combination over a given set, over a given box of parameters. We can, for example, think of optimization as the length of teacher's pointer. So the result would be the best compromise between the length and maybe the weight or deflection of the pointer. We can think or I can think about the optimization of the length of my lecture at university, trying to find a compromise between a huge amount of material I got to teach and your ability to listen to it without falling asleep. But in all of these cases, the result will never be something conceptually different. We will always stay within the same set of parameters. But there is another way of improvement that is called inventing, heuristics. One day, somebody suggests to a teacher to take a laser pointer instead of metal stick. Or somebody suggests me to convert my lecture into video format, to use internet, quizzes, chat room discussions. And this suddenly tells that invention has appeared. We invent a new structure with partially or completely different set of parameters and elements. Or sometimes we use completely different physical principle, uh, for example, laser instead of metal stick to make things happen. A great idea that somebody brought one morning in the office. A sketch or napkin in a restaurant. A concept for patent application, sharp thought, a beautiful poem. The problem is that actually the author of this idea has little understanding and cannot explain us how this idea heated his or her mind, where this new idea came from, what was a trigger, what was a source of inspiration. There is a special chapter in mathematics, for example, that is called heuristics, that describes all events like this. And by the way, it has little respect from professional theoretical mathematicians, because you cannot explain where the idea was this beautiful solution to that difficult equation came from. And we would like to teach creativity at universities, but we cannot. Am I making enough drama? Inventing brings us new concepts. It brings us solution to our problems. And after all, it brings us intellectual property, patents. Michael Idelchik, vice president for innovation of General Electric Company, once put it in a very nice way. If you start design process with a hippopotamus, you have really little chances that you will get a giraffe as a result of optimization. And that really a nice form underlines and highlights the importance of thinking out of the box, creativity. As it comes to creativity, they say, well, some people are talented, some aren't. Some people invent and some people don't. They say, oh, it is a kind of blessing, a gift. You have to be born in creativity. 
And there is a good message for those who listen to this course, because we try to address this challenge. We collected in the course a number of tools, a number of methods, how systematically generate new ideas on demand. We are going to teach algorithm of ideation. We are sure one day algorithms will evolve to automated creativity. Once computer has beaten a world chess champion, a human, and we are sure another day, and it's coming soon, computer will invent and file a patent. Or a search machine will deliver us an answer, not answer for our information search request, but our request for a new idea. Imagine this beautiful day you enter Google or Baidu system and ask how to stabilize oscillations. And the answer would be not one million of patents containing word stabilize or oscillation, but just an idea. Use parametric resonance. Use different suspension. Use anti-resonance. Wouldn't be so nice. That is why we are talking about automated creativity. And we invented a nice title for this course. It is called Artificial Inventiveness.